Our family playing basketball. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So this is Big Will, man. People that don't know, play that Texas Tech. You know, Big D1. <laughs> go Red Raiders. Um, so you average, what I've seen, what you average, 16 and 9 for your career, 16 and 10. So, you was, yeah, you was hooping. You was hooping. <laughs> you was hooping. I was very fortunate. Uh huh. You 6'7, right? Six, yeah, seven. that's fortunate. That's fortunate. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. So, all right. So, the first question I ask everybody is uh, who is the hardest person you ever had to play against? Um, during the the nineties, it had to be Charles Bo Outlaw. He ended up playing with okay. Orlando for like twelve years. Yeah. He was just um, he was six nine, six eight, six nine, athletic, long arms, just uh, could take a, a a shoulder to the chest, and you couldn't move him. You know that uh, type of thing. He's very athletic, so he had to be probably the toughest guy. He tore you playing. up. What's that? He tore you up. <laughs> he we, we had battles uh you know we he played uh, basketball at South Plains and I was at Tech at the time and I always thought we we're gonna get a chance to play each other and then when he graduated at, at South Plains he ended up going to University of Houston mm -hmm. kind of kind of broke my heart because I thought we we're gonna we we're, we we're gonna dominate the Southwest Conference at the time and uh, when he went to Houston so then we kind of became a little bit on that rivalry thing and so uh -huh. it was it was a uh, Total battle. I mean, total respect, but it was always battle. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's a uh, – he got, I think, his senior year, our, our senior year, uh, he got defensive player of the year, and I think I got offensive player of the year. So, it, it was one of those type of things. Yeah. So, uh, really enjoyed playing him. Uh, great guy. Great family. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, so talk about, like, kind of your high school experience with sports and, like, school and everything. How was that? High school for me was uh, – it was kind of magical. Um, we went – I played varsity basketball for four years. Uh, we went 129 victories to only seven losses, two state championships. Uh, so that basketball wise, it was a fairy tale. Football, uh, I played football also. Uh, my first year, we won three games at the varsity level. Second year, we won four. Third year, we won six. In my senior year, we were uh, got beat in the state semifinals. We were 13 and one. So Dang. what, what so was the big what was the big difference? You think from junior we just, to senior we just, year? We just kind of stayed together. Paducah has always been known as a basketball town, so football is kind of it just kind of takes the presence of okay, we have to do this during this time of year because we know what happens after football season. Basketball, mm -hmm. we, yeah, we around for us. Uh, track was always pretty good for us too. Uh, you know, I think my our. My junior year, we were state runner-up. In my senior year, we won – I think we won the state champ uh, track meet then. And so, I mean, sports at Paducah was really big, and it was good for me. I, yeah. We had some success. Yeah, and so – and talk a little bit – like, a little bit about Paducah. Cause like, how – because I've been there, and it was tiny. You know what I mean? I remember <laughs> I went when I was a little younger. And so, how was that growing up in that culture and then going to, like, a town like, – like, a big place like Lubbock? Like, how was that – how was that – was that much of a transition for you? Like, oh, huge, huge. Uh, you know, you always hear that, you know, you're, you're a, big, a big fish in a little pond, but when you step outside that, you're a minnow in an ocean. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it, it was a, a big adjustment uh, in, in a sense of size of town, the number of people, yeah. But you got to remember, Texas Tech is a, a lot – it's built on small-town people. Mm -hmm. And so it was nothing walking across campus and say, morning, morning, people are saying good morning, morning back to you. So it was that aspect of a small town atmosphere. Mm -hmm. uh, but the plane wise, it was, it was different. Uh, don't get me wrong, Paducah, at the time when I played in high school, we had some athletes that played at Division One and Division Two junior college, you know, throughout the course of uh, my four years. So I was used to the competition wise. Mm. Uh, it's just at tech, you just got more of them. Yeah. You know, they're coming right. at you, just coming at you. Like, you know, on the team, you got these guys that's playing in 5A that they're player of the year, 5A, this and that, this and that. And I'm, I'm playing the year 1A. So, you know, I'm thinking, you know, you just play basketball. You put yeah. the ball in the hoop and you stop the other guy. You know, but other people look down at that like, what? You're 1A? No, you ain't. You, well, you can't play at this level. I'm like, well, watch me. You know, right. It was, it was one of those challenges where I, I was out to prove that, you know, it doesn't matter where you grow up, 
the name of the game of basketball is you put the ball in the hole and you stop the other guy from scoring. Mm. That's all it is. Yeah. And so, um, and I think uh, in, in nothing against big towns. I think small town guys that play sports, they're truly, truly dedicated. Uh, they know the, the um, real reason of hard work mm. in a sense, uh, you know, we may go out and, and play basketball three or four hours a day, but, you know, we're going we're gonna to work. Mom and dad said, you better do these chores, da, da, da. You better get this done before you can do anything. That's what you do. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I think uh, being a small town helps you develop uh, the culture of a hard work, blue collar, that, that type of thing. And don't get me wrong, I, I think in bigger schools, you know, if you're hungry enough, you get the same exact thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was just, I mean, I was fortunate to grow in a small school and uh, play in, in big tournaments. And I think it helped me a lot. The exposure was when I was younger, going to Houston, playing, and in, in, in at the time it was the BCI instead of AAU, and qualifying for national was held in Tempe, Arizona, and having teams, a small town team like from Paducah that had three Paducah guys, uh, three guys from, uh, uh, two guys from Demet, two guys from, uh, uh, Wellman Union. So these are all small towns, and we went we went there to play nationals. I mean, I think we ended up like number number eight in the nation, and we we played with all small town guys. So it just goes to show you, it doesn't matter where you play at, as long as you understand the game and play hard and have passion for it, success can follow. Mm-hmm, right. And so, talk a little bit about why did you choose Texas Tech, and like what were some of your other like, or if you didn't go to Texas Tech, what was like the next school that you wanted to uh, play at? I was probably going to go to Arizona if I didn't go to Texas Tech. I was going to play for Lute Olsen. Uh, one, my junior summer, we went down and visited uh, my mom's sister, Marthan, and uh, fell in love with the place, got a chance to play at the uh, at Tucson and play some pickup games with Sean Elliott and Anthony Cook at the time. Well, those are mm-hmm. two studs. And uh, just kind of fell in love with it. But when we got back home, uh, my – grandmother kind of started getting sick because of the older older age and I felt like it was definitely we needed to be closer and so I chose Texas Tech because it was definitely central closer and then I could you know I could get in the car two hours I could be there mm-hmm. right right and so talk about your time at Texas Tech and how was that like I said, I have uh, I have lived a fairy tale. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, you, you come in, and I'll tell you a funny story. When I, I get to take, uh, Gerald Myers is the head coach, and, and so, you know, you don't know what to expect. You just know you better go hard. Mm-hmm. And so we're playing, we're practicing this and that, and I am – the first five games in, I'm averaging 16 points, six, 16 boards. And hey, look at you. <laughs> I am very fortunate. And then he comes to me the next game. He goes, hey, you're going to start. And, and I'm, I'm like, oh, I don't want to start. I, I like coming off the bench. I can see where I'm coming in for. I know exactly what's happening. I'm, I'm staying the guy. I know da, 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 And he's like, you're starting. And you ain't going to tell the coach no. Yeah, right, right, right. You know, <laughs> you know it, it was kind of a – it was kind of one of those – downers i'm like man i i i understand the game i i'm coming in six man my first five six game six man i know exactly what to do now i'm getting thrown right into the fire and you know it worked out for me it, it's it, like i said it's been a great experience uh had a little hard uh luck my sophomore year i broke my foot two or three times Dang. and uh so uh I, I got a screw put in it and then you know my by the time my junior year um, you know, I just put in my mind I want to be the best, one of the best players out of our league, mm-hmm. and uh, it really started to uh, turn around for me. Mm-hmm. And so, and um, so, how was kind of like your like? How would you describe like your game? Like, if you had a couple words, like how would you describe it? My game? Yeah. Hardworking. I I, I felt like. You may be more athletic than I am. You may be more skilled, but you won't ever outwork me. Mm-hmm. So hardworking. I, I'm going to give you 110% every second I'm out there. Mm-hmm. Um, you may get the upper hand on me because you're more skilled, but I am going at the end. I will outwork you. Yeah. So okay, I like that. I like that. So graduated from Texas Tech. 
so what was how how did the professional part come about how did you really know you were like okay i think i can do i really can do this how did that kind of come about well i'll, I'll be honest with you after graduated texas tech i didn't think my body can take any any more basketball mm. uh i was i think my senior year going a couple overtimes i was averaging 42 minutes a game mm, yeah, yeah they was and, killing you <laughs> oh yeah i mean it, it, it was brutal uh you know and so you know, I got drafted late second round, and then we opted out to be a free agent. And then uh, I went overseas. And it, it was easy money. Is I mean, it really was easy money. I start. We're starting a family. We're a new family, and so took my family with me over there, and uh, it, it was great. I mean, it, I knew that my body could not take all the pounding mm-hmm. that I had endured throughout the years, and so. You know, I, I kind of figured that out, you know, my sophomore year when I started having you know, those breaks in my feet. And yeah. I'm like, you know, I need to be very serious about this. I need to make sure I'm getting an education because basketball is great, but it'll, it won't carry you through your lifetime. You right. got to have an right. education to do that. And so right. that's what I did. Uh, no regrets. I've seen so much of the world through basketball, you know, I've seen gone to Australia, uh, New Zealand, uh, Japan. Uh, Greece, you know, all those different places, France, no regrets, not too bad from a small town boy from Paducah to visit all these places. Right, yeah, seriously, because <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I remember when I, I was shocked whenever I went there, because I was like, what, eight, nine years old, and we went, because Duncan, you know, Duncan's like 25,000, you know, it's right. decent size, you know, and and when I got there, it was like one stoplight. I was like, where, because I'm used to seeing McDonald's, burger. I was like, where's McDonald's? And I thought everybody had a McDonald's, you know what I mean, and it was it was different, you know. It was a lot different when I went up there, but it was it was a good time from what, what I can remember. You know, it was real fun. Oh, yeah, oh yeah. So, well, and that, that's the thing. Uh, you know, I, I can tell you stories about, you know, being in, I guess, middle school or, or elementary school. You know, you're going to school and then you're walking home as a group, and then you, you go through the five and dime store. And then, you know, you had a group of kids that are starting to get sticky fingers, picking up a piece of candy and not paying for it. Your mom hears about it and she tells you, don't go back in that store. You better walk around. I don't want you, I don't want you with those kids. Da, da, da. Yes, ma'am. Do it for two or three weeks. And then you think, hey, there's no way she'll know. Yeah, there's right. No way that I'll cut, I can cut through the store, save some time getting home. I remember walking in the back door of the five and dime and they had a little bell on the door. Bell, ding, ding. I'm walking in just so I can walk through. The cash register guy comes from behind, started undoing his belt. Walks right to me and spanks me from the back to the front outside outside of the store. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so Never I get back home. over there. <laughs> I mean, and so that's what it was, you know. You always respected the adults and – my mom had already told him, said, you see my son in, in your store without me. I want you to spank his butt and send him home. And, she, and he did. And when I got home, I got another one. So, you know, I learned, like, you know, you better listen to mom, man. You yeah, seriously, seriously, <laughs> yeah. seriously. So the next thing I was wondering, man, so how, like, how was, like, retirement? Like, you know, because most people, I, like, I interviewed a guy, he said it was kind of hard for him whenever he – because he played overseas. And he was like, man, I really mm-hmm. want to keep playing with my knee, you know. So how was the retirement for you? Was it kind of more peaceful? You was ready or, you know, did you think you sat a little bit left or? No, it, it was, it was the right time. Body knew it. Uh, when I retired, I got enthralled in the coaching. Mm. So when I finally hung up my shoes to play basketball, I went right back into coaching at the, at Texas Tech at my alma mater. Yeah. And so even though I wasn't playing it, saving my body, I was around it. Right. And that right, makes right. a difference. You yeah. know, and, and, and being at the college level, you know, you play at that high level, you being able to coach those athletes at that level, you didn't miss a beat. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you know, sometimes you're biting your lip like, oh, you need to make this move. But, you know, you're teaching. You're, you're teaching right. and, you, and you, see your, you see your young men that you have vested interest in developing and playing and playing at that high level. Hey, it's just like being on the floor again. Right, right. And so – um, what is what? What do you think? Like your uh, just to name a few or whatever. Like what do you think is your like biggest achievements that you think? When you think oh. like, like yeah, that's great. Like I, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as far as 
as coaches is developing young men beyond basketball. Mm -hmm. When you take the time in the young man that you're coaching and you're going in and making sure that they're going to class, they're make, you're making sure that they're not late for class, they're turning their homework. And at the time, the players don't see it. Right. They just see, see oh, coaches on me again, coaches on me again. But when you really truly enjoy it's like 10 years down the road, when you get that call, and from a former player and goes, Coach, I just want to say thank you for staying on my butt, making me go to class, or making sure that I was showed up for class mm -hmm. because I truly, truly understand it now. Mm -hmm. That's a reward. You know, it, it's like, you know, if you're going to get into coaching for rewards and money, this and that, you're probably getting it for the wrong reason. Right, 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 right. It's not instantaneous. I mean, you have to build, it's kind of like building those relationships. You build those relationships, you build those relationships of trust and understanding for your players and, and let them know that you care about them, not as, as just basketball players, mm -hmm. as real people. They can call you at any time during the day and night that you're going to respond mm -hmm. and you're going to listen. And I think it's a, the biggest deal is I think I'm a pretty decent listener. A lot of people want to solve things and jump right into it. Listen to what kids or young men have to say. Mm -hmm. And then only really truly give your input when they ask for it. Mm -hmm. They may just be just blowing off steam. I think so. I think that's one of the biggest deals. I in, in the years of coaching, I've learned is make sure that you listen before you start giving out advice. Right. So, right. so the biggest achievement is definitely getting building relationships, and then later on down the road you get the reward because your kids know how hard you work for them and, and that you cared about them as a person. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So, all right, man. So here's the bonus questions I do with everybody. So I got, I got some two, I got two, I got two quick hitters. Okay. I, I might come up with one more, but I got two that I wrote down. So first one is who is your Mount Rushmore of athletes? What's that? Mount Rushmore of athletes. The Mount Rushmore of athletes. <laughs> Are you gonna say that when uh, the last dance just come out? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you got you got to you got uh, basketball wise. I know Michael Jordan was the the man per se because he could do this, do that, he could do that. But people don't realize, you know anywhere from five to seven to maybe 10 years prior to that, the NBA almost crashed. Right, right, right. You know, Absolutely. it was, it was two guys that really as kept you can it. Burn. <laughs> yeah. As you can burn. I mean, bottom line, you know, and everybody's talking about, you know, uh, Jordan's the best. Isn't that, I'm not going to say he was the best. He's one of the greatest, but without those two cornerstones and even the guys that built that before them, but, those two truly bird and magic is the reason we have the NBA today. Right. So, you know, they have to be right up there. Uh, you know, you go before them, you know, big O, you know, a lot of people forget right. about it. But man, I was the average of triple double. How do you do that in the NBA, man? I mean, average. Uh, they were flying uh, Dr. J, you know, mm -hmm. he, you know, you think about Michael Jordan's game. He had to he had to tailor after somebody. Right, right. You know? And so you're looking at guys like that, Kareem Abdul Jabbar, uh, when big men were, you know, the dominant presence in, in basketball, yeah. you know, could do it all. Uh, Bill Russell, Wilt Chamberlain, you know, you, you gotta look at those guys and you know, it's it's tons more, you know, Pete Maravich, you know, all those guys. It's the classics. Yeah. You know, you got the modern day guys now, you, you, you know, guys that shooting the ball 40 feet, mm -hmm. knocking down bottom every time, you know, awesome. But the guys that paved the way for him, that's who I stick by. Yeah. Oh, that. <laughs> so. <laughs> no doubt. No uh, doubt. Okay. So the second, the second question. So you had a star bench cut, right? So mm -hmm. Will Chamberlain, Bill Russell, and Kareem. You had a star bench cut. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so probably the most dominant guy there is Will. Buddy can never be Bill. 
You think about it. Right. All right. So when you when you come down that, so if I had to cut, you know, the first one I'd have to cut, I'd have to cut Will as dumb as he was. The other two kind of knew how to get it done. Then you're looking at Kareem Russell, who has the most championships. Right, right. Yep, yeah. at, the, at the end of the day, people are going to remember the one who won number one. He's going to be first. They're going to forget about the guy with second uh, runner-up. Right. But you got to go with Bill. Right. Okay, I, I respect that. I respect that. All right, last question. This is my last – I just thought of this one. Last question. So, do you think LeBron could play in the 80s and 90s? Honestly, honestly. I think people – I mean, if you hadn't seen LeBron in person, LeBron 6'9", 270. Cat-like skills. Yeah. That's like a S10 truck coming at you and just turning on the dime. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I think his, his physical presence could have played – in the time of the bad boys and, you know, because he's big and physical enough to handle that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now, getting beat on every single day because you know how the NBA is right now. You breathe on somebody too hard to foul. Right. You got, oh, he, he came in too hard, uh, flagrant this, flagrant that. That wasn't any of that. Right. Now, the only thing that you have to wonder about LeBron is could he have taken the beating that these guys are physically putting out night after night. Right, right, you know, right. You know, Patrick Ewing and, and the Knicks, boy, they come through. You go through their half speed, they're going to take your head off. Right. I mean, so that's just how basketball was. It has changed tremendously. Do I think you can play in, in, the, in the 80s? Yeah. I don't know how long his body would last, though. Mm, so you think his whole game would just change? You don't think he'd be plowing through the lane how he does now? I agree. It would it would become more of a he he would be more like a to me a Carl Malone. Mm, yeah, that that's that's how his game would change. You know, LeBron and a lot of people don't see all his aspect of the game. You know, they say, oh well, they always kind of compare him to Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. You know, bottom line, Michael Jordan was he had the ball when it's crunch time. You know, he's gonna shoot the thing. Right. Bottom line. He, he going to kick it out every once in a while to a Kerr or a Paxson every once in a while. But 95% of the time, he's taking it. LeBron's game, he's going to hit you in spurts. But he's, gonna, he's looking to, to create. He's looking to create. Looking to create. Okay, so every time he tries to create with back in the 80s, he's getting hit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he ain't going to be able to make those clean passes. So <laughs> his game is going to have to ch turn in like uh, – Stockton Malone, they get it. He's got to take it in, and he's got to come in with some authority. Knees up, whole nine yards. His game would change. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, I got one more, man. You, you got you my basketball mind spinning. You got my basketball mind spinning. <laughs> last question. This is my last question. Last question. Who is the one person you wish you would have got to play against? Just whoever. Who's the one person you wish you really would have got a chance to play? Okay. My favorite person – Basketball player of all time is Dominique Wilkins. Okay. Okay. Not because he was such a, a – he wasn't a great shooter, but it's a human highlight. Mm-hmm. Okay. You, you think about how many times he, he go dunk on you, this and that and that. My goal would be – I'm not going to let him turn that corner. How, how can I stop him from turning that corner on me? Mm -hmm. How can I stop him in the open court? Because that, that's where he got so many posters of people, you know, they give it to him on the break, and all of a sudden you try to jump with him, you and you jump in. <laughs> you, may have, you may have a 32-inch vertical. He's jumping over 40-something. Bam! You know, just highlight. So that that would be the one that I would love to play because I'd love to see if I could keep him from getting to the paint, making him shoot at mid-range, see, see how it turns out. Mm -hmm. so, uh Dominique was a, like a freaking nation, nature. I mean, he got to the paint. You better, you better close your eyes. You better move. You better curl up. Mm -hmm. So, make him do something different. Right. You know? So that, that that would be all-time favorite player. That's what I would love to do is play him and see if I could, I could 
keep him outside the paint. People don't talk about him enough, man. He was a killer back then. Like he kind of oh. gets lost, and you know, he kind of gets lost, you know, you know, in hindsight about people being one of the greatest, you know, players ever played. You know, but. absolutely. All right, Kevin, I got a question for you. You ready? Yeah. What's up? All right. What started you playing basketball? What started me playing? Man, it was really when I was a baby. That was my first toy. It was a little basketball, <laughs> you know. But I really. Really, it was just in me, you know, because Uncle Buster, Kermit, you know, he played. Uh, Mom played. Mm-hmm. Remember, like, everybody, I just kind of knew at a young age that basketball was going to have to be it for me. You know, because I, I, really, I want to fit in. I didn't want to be the, the kid everybody else played, and I just right. played in the band or whatever, you know what I mean, or whatever, you know. And I really wanted to be better than what Mom and Uncle Buster and all of them were, even as a kid, you know what I mean? And – Middle school is when I really, really, really took it seriously because people are like, oh, you'll never be better than Sharika. You'll never be better than Sharika. She was, she was really, you know what I mean? I was like, I'm going to show y'all that I will be better than my mom once <laughs> I get to high school. And I always carried that tip of my shoulder. I was going to be better than mom. And mom was never going to beat me. And that was, and that, you know, but really just me really wanting to start. I was just that love for it because, you know, as a kid, I would – want to go shoot outside on the big goal. I didn't want to go shoot on the little bitty goal. I wanted to shoot on that big, the real goal and recess. I remember me and mom was talking about it not too long ago. And she was like, whenever you were in pre-K or whatever, the teachers were so shocked that you were really wanting to just, you never, you didn't want to play tag. You didn't want to do, you wanted to shoot on the goals. And, right. you know, and I just never really lost that love. And I, and it's just addicting to me. Basketball is just addicting because you can go one for 15 one for 12 for two games, and the next game, 10 for 10. Like, you never know what it'll bring. You know what I mean? And it's, and that's, it's just really addicting to me, man. Oh, man, I, it's, it's, it's just fun, man, just playing against guys. That's really good. It's just really – it's just fun. It's addicting. Like, I don't know where I would be without basketball. So. All right, so you just talked about, you know, you may go 10 for 10 one game, you may go one for 12 next next game. How do you get yourself out of those slumps? Oh man, I, me personally, I've always prided myself on getting a rebound, getting a steal. If you if you get in that slump, do something different. I mean, if your jump shot ain't working, try to get to the free throw line, try to get a layup in, get a steal, get an easy break. You know what I mean? Make a, you know see something go in. Cause me, cause when I had forty one against Douglas last year, I watched the game and man, I was like two for six with like two turnovers in the first quarter. I was not having a good first quarter. And then I got a steal, got to see the ball kind of go in a little bit, got a free throw. And then I was watching and I was like, okay, it's a little better. You know what I'm saying? But I wish I would have had the mentality really my sophomore, freshman, sophomore year when I played. Cause if my shot was off, I didn't want to play no more. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was just like, man, like let's go and toss it up for the night. You know what I mean? I ain't going to get 20, you know what I mean? But I really wish I would have had the mentality back then. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's a maturity thing. But I was glad to hear you say, you know, when, when I'm off, you know, get a steal, and then I can see an easy one go, go in. Mm-hmm. You know, so many young players are labeled shooters, and they're like, they may be one for 12. They're still shooting. still shooting. Sure. And the phrase that you just used, I use it all the time. And, and every time I coach, do something different. If it's not working – do something different. You got to understand your game within the game. Mm-hmm. And it sounds like you understand that. So I am happy for you, bud. Yeah, thank you, man. Yeah, but man, I wish, uh, like I said, I wish I would have learned that, man, a long time ago, man, because there's so many other components to playing basketball. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I mean, yes, it is. You know, because uh, God, when we were out rebound, you know what I mean? They had a way bigger team than us. And the coach was like, hey, you're going to have to really hit the boards tonight, Kev. You know what I mean? Like, you might not score your 30, 20, you know, you might, you know, but I got to lock down on defense, you know. So yeah. there's so many different components, man, that people don't understand, man. Like, you can rebound, you can go, you got to lock it down, they best player. You got to, there's so many different things other than just scoring, you know what I mean? And I, because I was primarily just my freshman sophomore year. That's all I wanted to do. That's all I cared about, man. They would hide me on defense. I would guard, man. I would guard the fattest dude on the team. You know, what I mean, I just wanted to. I just wanted to score. And then when that wasn't happening, man, I, you know, I would get an attitude. And I, you know, I was like, man, oh, man, twelve points, fifteen minutes, embarrassing, man. You know, I ain't trying to do all that. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And but you know, when I put it all together, you know what I mean. No matter what, you know, that's it, junior senior it went way better. You know what I'm saying? But. What was kind of your mentality, you know, because especially at a D1 school, like how was your, what was your mentality like going against some of the you best know, players in the country every every game? Well, when I when I first got here, 
they're, they're telling me, well, you need to score between eight and 10 points. And so I, I broke it down. I'm like, okay, that's no big deal. I said, if you want me to score eight to 10 points, that's literally four buckets a half plus free throws. Yeah. So that's not huge. And so I broke it down like that. If I, if I run transition, I should be able to get at least two easy buckets. Mm-hmm. Right? That's, that's simple. If I go hard and run in transition, I'll get two easy buckets. Okay? And then, like you say, you're going to, in, in, a, in a course of a game, you have ups and downs. You're going to get in that zone. Bucket's going to feel this big. Right, right, right. <laughs> it's feel this big, but right, yeah, it's going to feel this big. Okay? If your teammates understand, I'm not going to be hunting shots. It'll become in the offense, and it'll, it'll be real fluid. At the end of the game, are you the guy that wants – the ball in your hand and can you deliver for your team Mm. and I had to take that role on very early and I could hit free throws and so if they foul me I'd step up and hit free throws I I could you know I I think I played Texas A&M one one year and uh, they refused they were their bottom line they were like you're not gonna get a bucket on me you're not I mean I'm going up boom they're just holding me da 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 I'm knocking down free throws we beat them. We're, I'm, I mean, I, I, I went something like um, 14 out of 15 from the free throw line. Right. Not a field goal. Because they, they're like, they refuse. You're not going to hit a field goal. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. And, again, it was the defense, the rebounding, the defense, the rebounding. A lot of people don't understand this. My best offense was my defense. Mm-hmm. You know, even if you're having a tough night shooting – you make you spark the defense and you get a good a steal, get you an easy one. Like I say, see it go through the bucket. Man, start to feel good. Your team's starting to feel it. And emotional player, if you get an M1, let people yeah. understand it. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't be like, it's fun, man. Yeah, it's yeah. fun, man. Seriously. Yeah. Seriously. Man, yeah, so, man. Because like when I, my best games was at, you know, when I went good, you know, with free throws. You know what I'm saying? Like when I had the 41, I went like 13 for 14 from the line. I had a 40-point game against Cash, and I went 12 for 12. You know what I'm saying? That free Because, you know, that was kind of been my Achilles heel was free throws. You know, because we played against the number two team in the state last year, and, I, man, I probably went like four for 10 from the line. You know what I'm saying? Because it was – we was just – you know, I was I gave so much on offense and defense, man. My legs was gone, and I was doing free throws. Man, they free, and I was – man, I, you know, they tough, man. But, yeah, they free. You know, you got to hit them. But – that that me playing that game, missing all those free throws at you know playing against the number two team in the state during the playoffs, that really helped me for like conditioning and stuff during the summer. You know, I was like, man, like I'm not, uh, my legs can't get that tired. I, well, I couldn't walk. <laughs> you have to, you know, my legs was hurting so bad, and and I was like, I got to get in the gym. I got to run. I got to do. I got to yeah. find something to do. I was like, my legs can't ever be that exhausted. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so. Worked on free throws, man, because, man, free throws is hard. I mean, free throws is kind of, you know what I mean? People think, like, they, they to me, I feel like that was a really hard shot to make. If you – because, like, people like, oh, because, I, you know, I like I like being guarded and shoot it, you know, but, like, it's just you. You know what I mean? The day sitting right here is just you shooting a free throw by yourself. And, you know, it's just – that's man, free throws are all mental, man, because I – and like, times I'll be like, oh, crap, they fell. I got to go too long. You know, I got to get – you know, I got to get two down. You know what I mean? And you, you, can't, you know, it's – it's tough. Definitely it's true. Tough, man. But you got any more questions for me before we end it? No, hey, sir. Hey, thank you, man. Thank you for <laughs> real, man. This was this was great, man. This was a fun one. Was, yeah. <laughs> well, absolutely. I, it's always fun talking to family and always fun listening to how they are developing to be young men, men, men of our community. And you're, you're headed on the way up, man. I appreciate yeah, thank it. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Yeah, but, <laughs> hey, man, when we play, man, if I come down to Lubbock, man, I'm going to have to show you something. You know what I mean? Right, come, on, come on down. Hey, I got, I got some sons that still play, so come on down, man. Uh, that'll be fun, man. Yeah, ain't nobody in them was like, man, you got like, to like, go out to Lubbock this summer now that you know them. You know what I mean? You got to go down there and play. <laughs> come on and visit. Come on and take, down, take a visit. My, I got two sons. They're both about 6'5". Uh, my youngest son played a little bit at – South Plains and then uh, Howard Payne. So uh-huh. come on down. Yeah, man, that'll be fun, man. But yeah, well, I'll, I'll text you that. I'll see if we, we, if we can get up, you know. But okay. <laughs> hey, thank you, man, for real. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Hey, tell the family I said hello and I love them. I will, man. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome.